one question I get asked is, how do I launch my boat solo? Now for me, it was a bit of a necessity. My wife made it clear when I first bought this boat, she doesn't want anything to do with putting it in or out of the water. She doesn't want to hold the boat at the dock. She doesn't want to drive the boat. She doesn't want to drive the truck, back up the trailer, any of it. And it's because we have seen couples at launches literally lose their business on each other, yelling and screaming, being mean. We saw a wife once throw the truck in park mid launch and storm away, leaving her husband halfway in the water. Nope. She doesn't want anything to do with this. And you know what? Thank you. I was going to have to learn this skill on my own anyways, because I do find myself out here solo fishing quite often. Listen to me. I have learned some lessons. I have hit the dock. I have fallen in. I have forgotten my drain plug twice. I have left the motor down as I pulled the boat out of the water. So you, there's some things you have to think about as you're launching your boat. However, as you figure out your rhythm and routine, this is definitely something that you can do and do well solo. So stay tuned, 501 Fishing, here we go. As with most things in life, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. There's no right or wrong way to solo launch your boat. There's just your way that you'll learn through time and practice on the water. Now there are factors to consider. The size of the boat you have, the type of trailer you have, a bunk trailer versus a roller trailer, your physical condition, the condition of the launch, the condition of the weather. High winds make solo launching a bit tricky. The goal is to do it safely, to do it without damaging your boat or the launch, and to keep it stress-free. And this technique that I'm about to show you works best for me. So let's begin with the launch. I always start off here at the bow. First thing I do is I remove the safety chain. I then just loosen here the bow strap, just enough to give it a little bit of play. So I... Next thing I do is remove the tie down straps here. I have a stern saver slash just kind of an engine block holder here called my wedge, super slick. A quick look at the drain plug to make sure everything looks good. Stick it on in there and just tighten it down. It's time to launch. Now I'm in no rush here. My goal is to slowly back up the trailer until I see the back of the boat just come off the bunks. Now remember, I still have the bow strap attached so this boat's not going anywhere. I'm going to jump out of the truck, step on the back bumper, step down onto the tongue of the trailer. I'm going to reach down and detach the bow strap. Then I can lift up and gently push the boat off the bunk. At this point, I could step onto the dock, walk back, and board the boat from the side. But instead, I'm going to prove my agility and balance by boarding the boat on the bow. I'm going to go with a knee, do a little shove, step over that trolling motor, and walk onto the back. Once on board, I'm going to sit in the captain's chair, lower the engine, start up the motor, and back her out. Now remember, proper etiquette is to not tie up your boat at the end of an active dock. So I'm going to park my boat here to the left as you see. At this point, I could either beach it or tie it up. You do this so that other boaters have a chance to get on and off the lake quickly. Here I'm going to go ahead and tie up the boat, walk over, find a parking spot for the truck, come on back, and it's fish on. Now there's a second way that I launch my boat solo. While it doesn't require you to be as nimble, it does add a little bit of stress, especially if the wind starts blowing. Check it out. Now with this technique, I've already removed the bow strap from the boat. I'm going to back the trailer in to where the tires are about three quarters in the water. I'm using 550 paracord and I'm going to attach one end to the cleat of the boat. The other end, I'm going to walk to the end of the dock and attach it there. The goal is to have a controlled launch. So what I'm going to do is start to back up the trailer slowly. As I see the boat start to lift, I'm going to hit the brakes and the boat's going to glide right off the trailer. Now an important step here is to put the truck in park. Once I've done that, I will walk back to the end of the dock, grab the retrieval line, pull it on in, disconnect it, step onto the bow of the boat, and do what I just did. Go beach the boat, park the truck, and let's go fishing. Now this next part will likely create a debate in the comment section below. 
we're talking about power loading your boat onto the trailer. Now personally, I don't power load for two main reasons. First, the way that I load the boat feels like it gives me more control getting it centered on the bunks of the trailer. But second and most importantly, power loading can cause damage to the launch, damage to your boat or the boats around you. So as I load my boat on the trailer, let's talk about a few of the reasons why. Now through practice I've learned that all I have to do is back up the trailer to where the front diamond plates of the wheel well are about an inch underwater. You can see here the front bunks are still exposed. Now I'm going to push the boat back, hop on in, start up the motor, and then at idle speed run the boat up to the trailer. It's only going to make it about 75% of the way on, but those bunks are going to self-center it. At that point I'm going to step over the bow, walk up to the bow strap, attach it, and then I'm going to winch it the rest of the way on. Now the reason I don't power load is if I would have hit my throttle where the boat had stopped, my prop wash over time will begin to erode the sediment at the base of the ramp. As that happens, it starts to dig a large hole and all that sediment gets kicked up and creates a mound behind the hole. Now, as more power loading happens and over the summer, that hole gets bigger, that mound gets bigger, and you run the risk of running aground or damaging your prop on the mound. In addition, if the hole at the base of the ramp is big enough, your trailer tires can fall in and get stuck. So again, for me, I don't power load because I believe that it can cause damage to the launch. It risks damage to your boat and the boats around you. And there you go. This is how I put the boat on and off the water solo. Now again, this is the way that works for me. I encourage you to go out there and put the minutes on the water with your boat and find your way. Hopefully there was some information here that you found helpful. If you like what you saw, do me a favor and hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you're always on point for 501 fishing content when it comes out. And until next time, tight lines, and I'll see you on the water.